and welcome to this episode of God Day. Today, I'm going to be talking about fighting temptation. What is temptation and how can we overcome it? Well, have you ever been in a moral battle with yourself? Wanting to do something, but knowing you shouldn't, as it will lead into doing something you'll regret. Knowing if you go to that bar, you'll have one too many drinks. Knowing if you meet up with that guy or girl, you'll end up back at their house. Knowing if you start on that slot machine, you'll end up spending too much money. But because deep down, you want to do these things, you try to find ways around it. You find ways why it's okay to do it. But the moral battle in your heart is that you want to do what's right and what is godly. So you even go as far as praying to God to show you clearly what to do in the situation as if you didn't already know. And then when he tells you to flee from it, you ignore him and walk right into it. Yeah, me too. We all face different temptations as we all have different weaknesses. Drugs, alcohol, smoking, pornography, sexual activity, gambling, eating too much, spending too much time on social media, the list goes on. But fighting temptation is about discipline. It's about having the right motivation and the right heart not to do something. And usually the things that we are tempted to do are actually harmful for us. And that's why God advises us not to do it. Let's look at an example. In the Bible, in fact, it's the first ever temptation which caused sin and death to come into the world. And this happened in the Garden of Eden. It tells us in Genesis 3, verse 3 to 6, that the serpent was more clever than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. The serpent said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat fruit from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden. Do not even touch it. If you do, you will die. You will certainly not die, the serpent said to the woman. God knows that when you eat fruit from that tree, you will know things you have never known before. Like God, you'll be able to tell the difference between good and evil. The woman saw that the tree's fruit was good to eat and pleasing to look at. She also saw that it would make a person wise. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then both of them knew things they had never known before. They had realized they were naked. So they sewed together fig leaves and made clothes for themselves. So here we see where temptation comes from. And the serpent was the devil. He puts doubts in our minds. He makes us question what God told us. Did he really say? And he also lies to us. He tells us everything will be okay if we go ahead with falling into our temptation. There he told Eve, you will not die. But that was a lie because God already had said, if you eat from the fruit, it will lead to death. And we see from this story and from our own experience that if we listen to the devil, if we listen to the temptation and we don't listen to what God says, that it often brings emotional pain and destruction. Our temptations are usually things we enjoy doing or things that we actually want to do. And the devil then uses this as leverage to sway us to give in. But I just want to emphasize here that temptation does not come from God. As we have just seen, it comes from the devil. But James 1.13 also says, when a person is tempted, they shouldn't say, God is tempting me. God can't be tempted by evil and he doesn't tempt anyone. But each person is tempted by their own evil desires. These desires lead them on and drag them away. 
When these desires are allowed to remain, they lead to sin. And when sin is allowed to remain and grow, it leads to death. The devil puts these ideas in our head. It's like, you know, when there's a pack of cookies in the cupboard and they're there, and you know you put them there. But at that moment in time, you're not hungry. You know you don't need to eat them. And especially as you're trying to be healthy. But you hear them calling your name. And the next thing you know, you've ate the whole packet. You just gave in. And that's the danger of temptation too. It's once you give in, it's easy to lose control. And losing control is a sin. Being tempted itself isn't the sin, but giving in is. And why I know I can say that is because Jesus was tempted. The Bible tells us he was tempted a number of times when he was in the wilderness, but he didn't give in. Jesus is the only human being who has walked on this earth who didn't sin, yet he was tempted. So how did he overcome this temptation? Well, he used the word of God to battle it. Hebrews 4.15 says, We have a high priest who can feel it when we are weak and hurting. We have a high priest who has been tempted in every way, just as we are. But he did not sin. So firstly from that verse, I want to emphasise the fact that Jesus knows what you are going through. Jesus has been weak. Jesus has hurt and he understands what you are going through. So he also understands when we are tempted. He also understands the moral battle that we face. But he did not sin. And Matthew 4 verse 1 to 11 tells us this story of when Jesus is tested in the wilderness. It says, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took to him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendour. All this I will give to you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and the angels came and attended him. So the purpose of Jesus being led into the desert by the Spirit was so that he could overcome the temptations of the devil. And how did he do this? By standing on the word of God and using it as a weapon to defeat the devil who then left him. We saw there that also the devil tried to use the word against Jesus. The devil was trying to be clever to make it seem like he knew what God was saying and try and put doubt in Jesus' mind on what God had actually said. And like I mentioned earlier, he does that to us. He did it to Eve. Did God really say when he says it to us? Is it really that bad to go and do what you want to do? Will it really lead to destruction? He tries to convince us that falling into that temptation is a good thing. The devil comes as an angel of light. He tries to sway us to do what our fleshly desires want us to do. But we know that if we follow our fleshly desires and not the path that Jesus has set out for us, then we often get hurt, we often get wounded, we get hurt emotionally, 
sometimes physically. But we have to learn from these experiences to know, in trust, to trust in God and what he says. So, Jesus went into the desert as an example to us that when we are tempted, we don't have to give in. We have a way out. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, you are tempted in the same way all other human beings are. Let me just pause there for a second. All other human beings are. So firstly, when you are feeling tempted, there's no need to feel shameful or alone because all humans experience the same thing. We are all weak when it comes to temptation. We all have different weaknesses, like I mentioned at the beginning. But as Corinthians carries on to say, God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted any more than you can take. But when you are tempted, God will give you a way out. Then you will be able to deal with it. This is one practical way that we can defeat temptations from the devil. By standing on and believing in God's word. In that scripture that I've just read, it says that we will not be tempted more than we can stand. When we are tempted, we have a choice. We can give in to our fleshly desires, and usually we will enjoy it for a time, and as I mentioned, it leads to destruction. Or we can trust and believe in God and stand on God's word to know that if we follow God's way, it will bring peace and comfort and healing. So let's look at some other practical things that we can do to fight temptation when it comes our way. Firstly, and maybe the most importantly, is to pray. Communication with the Father is so important. And Jesus himself even includes avoiding temptation in the Lord's Prayer, which is a model for us to follow when we pray. Recorded in Matthew 6, verse 13, Jesus said, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Now, some people interpret, it, interpret this verse that God leads us into the temptation. But as we read in the book of James earlier, it doesn't come from God. But he does allow it in accordance to free will so that we have a choice in our actions. If God didn't allow it, then he takes away our ability to make a choice. And if we don't have ability to make that choice, then we don't have free will. Therefore, in the Lord's Prayer, we can be asking God to protect us, to guide us around situations and away from circumstances that may lure us into ungodly actions. Psalm 141 verse 4 emphasises this by saying, Do not let my heart be drawn to what is evil, so that I take part in wicked deeds, along with those who are evildoers. I'm just going to read that again. It says, Do not let my heart be drawn to what is evil, so that I take part in wicked deeds, along with those who are evildoers. We can use that scripture as our prayer. Our prayer to God to guide us away from tempting situations. God allows temptation, but if we pray for him to guide us away from it, he will answer our prayers. So that's the second practical thing that we can be aware of and focus on. Let's not put ourselves in a tempting situation or put ourselves in an environment where it'll be hard to resist the temptation. For example, if you was on a diet and you were trying so hard to eat healthily and stay away from any fatty foods or burgers, you wouldn't go and sit in McDonald's, would you? Being surrounded by the smells of the food, seeing other people eating it, and wishing you can do it yourself. You're just asking for trouble. And I mentioned there that you'd be watching other people indulging in that temptation. So another thing we can do is be cautious about who we are surrounding ourselves with. If we're surrounding ourselves with people who are going out drinking 
and we feel like one of our weaknesses and temptations is to drink, then maybe we shouldn't go to bars with them and see them drinking because then that'll make us want to do the same. For example, again, if you're trying to eat healthily and your friends say, do you want to come to McDonald's with us? And you think to yourself, yeah, I'll go and I'll just have a salad. Do you think that's what you would do in reality? So we just have to be careful with who we hang out with and where we hang out and just keep our eyes fixed on God and pray and ask God, where would be the best situations and scenarios for me to surround myself with? And maybe you could ask a friend to keep you convicted. If you do go out and you do have a drink, maybe ask a friend to make sure you only have one so you're not tempted to have too many, which leads to then drunkenness, which leads to loss of control. And that is the sin. Remember, the temptation isn't the sin, it's the giving in and where it leads. So maybe having someone there to support you spiritually and guide you into doing what's right. Something else we can do is combat the tempting thoughts with other spiritual, positive, God-focused thoughts, such as maybe singing worship songs in your head or reciting the scriptures. We have control of our thoughts. And many times we're deceived to think that our thoughts control us, that our feelings control us, that our emotions control us. But that's not true. We can learn to control those and not be overwhelmed by them. And especially when negative thoughts come into your mind, remember, that's the devil. The devil puts in doubt. The devil puts in insecure, insecurity into your heart. The devil tells you you're not strong enough to fight this temptation. So you might as well just give in. Remember, the devil is a liar. You do have the strength to fight the temptation and God gives you that strength, as we said, by standing on the word. So we can combat these tempting thoughts with the word. Or worship songs are a great way of doing this because not only are you filling your mind with positive thoughts, but you're also worshiping and praising God at the same time. And let's face it, worship songs or any songs often get stuck in our head. And that's a good thing in this case because then it will combat the negative, tempting thoughts that you might be fighting with. Having the right motivations is also very important to fighting temptation. If you have weak motivations, such as not wanting to give in to temptation just because the Bible says, or just because it's the right thing to do, but you don't have it in your heart that you want to resist these things, then most likely you will give in. When we have a solid reason to stay strong, then we are more likely to be able to combat the fleshly desires with our spiritual ones. And this usually comes from experience of the damage caused by giving into temptation. Now, I've got an example that I'm going to share with you. This isn't necessarily spiritual, but it's more on a practical level. But I have a vocal condition uh, called nodules. Some of you might know what that is if you are a singer. But a few years ago, I would very often lose my voice and I wouldn't understand why. So I went to the doctors and they put a camera down my throat to show me that I have nodules. And basically what these do, they stop my vocal cords from vibrating together and can lead to loss of voice. Now there's a number of ways I can avoid this. I can avoid this by not straining my voice over loud music by not drinking coffee or anything with caffeine, caffeine in it because it dries out my throat, and also not drinking alcohol. There's things that I can also do to improve this, which I have been doing over the years and it has got better. I've been given vocal exercises to do daily and to drink plenty of water and hot drinks such as uh, hot water with honey and lemon. But this year I decided to do a dry January. Many people do this at the beginning of the year. They give up something as a New Year's resolution or just have a break to try and be healthy or get their mind spiritually focused. But this year, I decided to do dry January because of my throat. My motivation is that if I drink alcohol, I then risk losing my voice. And as you can see from even just this message, 
I need my voice to be able to preach the good news of Jesus Christ. That is my passion. That is what is on my heart. I love to evangelize and God's given me a voice to do that. But if I abuse my voice, if I give in to temptation by drinking, then I actually put a roadblock in the way for God to be able to use me. It's also very frustrating when I lose my voice and I can't speak to people. I have to get out my phone and text them and show them what I'm trying to say. But all of this could be avoided if I just fight temptation. So that's just an example from my own life. I'm sure you can think of many times where you gave in to temptation and on reflection, you realize the damage that it caused. And in hindsight, you probably had this Holy Spirit inside you telling you, flee. But instead, because your fleshly desires wanted it so bad, you ended up walking into it. But remember, in the times we are tempted, as Corinthians said, we have a way out. And when we succeed in taking that way out, it builds us spiritually. It spills our spiritual muscles and we can learn for future experiences. As humans, when we give in to temptation, it is often followed by a self-condemnation, by guilt and shame. But that is not what God wants us to feel. He wants us to recognise that we have sinned and to repent by bring it, bringing it to him and asking him to forgive us. And then he will forgive us. Repentance isn't just saying sorry. Repentance is coming to the Lord, admitting you did something wrong, being open and honest with the Lord, because he sees your heart, he sees what you've already done, but for your own benefit, he wants you to be able to come to him and know that he will love you no matter what. But repentance is bringing it to God and then trying to turn from that sin, trying and knowing that you're gonna find that temptation again in your life, but you want to be strong enough to fight against it with all these practical things that I've given you in this message. By praying, by controlling your thoughts, by reading the scriptures. There's so many ways that you can fight temptation. And then once you bring it to God and you repent and ask for forgiveness, he will forgive you. And he will not hold it against you. And therefore, if he's not holding it against you, then you need to also learn to let it go. God loves you and he forgives you. And when he forgives you, he wipes the slate clean. Therefore, if you're holding on to all these sins, all these negative thoughts, all these times you've been tempted, then you're just gonna bring yourself down and you're not gonna be connected with God who has already forgiven you. So I want to encourage you and remind you that all of us face temptation. All of us have different weaknesses but we can combat them. We can fight them and we can choose to listen to God. Remember at the beginning when I was talking about the moral battle in our hearts, that we want to do something, but we know we shouldn't because it's not godly. I really hope this message has helped you, that when you're in them moments, you can think through the practical things we have talked about today and you can choose the right path. Thank you so much for watching today's God Day and I will see you soon.